What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods coming at y'all with another week five preview. And we got our swag game of the week on our channel, man. That means comment your score predictions below at the end of the video. Give who do you got winning? What's the score? You hit it on the head, pick the correct winner. You win our $50 giveaway this week. So make sure to comment your scores below. Make sure to subscribe now and also like the video. But we got a huge SWAC East matchup down in Tallahassee this Saturday night. Alabama State traveling down to Bragg Memorial Stadium against Florida AM in their first ever home game as a SWAC conference team. 5 p.m. Central Time on Facebook Live. I'm not exactly sure which Facebook channel it's on. I'm probably going to assume FAMU's Facebook channel. But um, as soon as I know, I'll post it in the comments below. But as of right now, I haven't heard which Facebook channel it's on. But it will be somewhere on Facebook being live stream. So make sure to tune in for that. Also, if you can follow us on Twitter, I'll tweet it out as soon as I find out too. But this is going to be an ultra important matchup for both of these teams and could potentially serve as an elimination matchup for both of these teams in terms of the SWAC championship race, especially for the Rattlers who already lost their SWAC East opener against Jackson State in week one. I'm assuming Bragg Memorial is going to be rocking. Fam, all those FanView fans have been looking forward to the SWAC opener at home. Alabama State's coming in off a huge win over Bethune-Cookman. At the, the stage is set for a great game. That's why I picked it as my game of the week this, uh, this weekend. But let's get to the storylines. Like I said, Alabama State coming in at 2-1. and one. They win their SWAC over, uh, opener over Bethune last weekend. And if they win this weekend, guys, they get to 2-0 and oh in the SWAC. They get to 3-1 and one overall. You're talking about this Alabama State team could have really established themselves as a true contender in the SWAC. A huge road win, a huge win over Bethune. Their only loss was to Auburn, who's a top 25 team right now. And what a turnaround for head coach Donald Ely after, for some reason, after they lose to a D1 Auburn team, he gets put on the hot seat and they're ready to ship him out of town right then. If he wins this weekend, he goes from being on the hot seat to potentially, I mean, be, you got to you gotta think he could be in the coach of the year race for the SWAC just because of what he's doing with this Alabama State team out of nowhere when no one thought they were going to compete for this division. So a lot is on the line for the Hornets this weekend. Now for the Rattlers, they come in one and two, but they got a much needed bye week last week after a tough game against South Florida. Many fans and experts are really wondering if fam, you can challenge and rebound and try to get to the SWAC championship game. I know FAMU fans are confident. Our guy, Mr. Campbell, always is talking about how FAMU is going to rebound. There was someone who also was betting uh, all script that they're going to win out for the rest of the year. So there's no shortage of confidence down there in Tallahassee. But they have to, they have to get it on the right track this weekend. If they can put the SWAC on notice with a dominant – win against Alabama State this weekend, but a loss here all but eliminates them from SWAC uh, championship contention. Now, the Hornets lead the all-time series by one game, 19-18 to 18 with three ties, but the Rattlers won the last matchup in this, in, in this ro I guess, now a division robbery back in 2008, but this will be the first time these schools meet as division rivals which will now be going forward in the SWAC East. But let's get to the keys of the game. I'm going to start with the Hornets of Alabama State, and it's simple. As long as you have number 20 lining up in the backfield, the key is going to be to run the football for Alabama State. Establish your pace, establish the physicality, and play that old school, that old school form of football you like to play with the suffocating defense, the smash mouth running, and you're just going to wear down your opponent. It has worked for you, so I expect to see a heavy dose of running this weekend from the Hornets. Now, 
the rushing game is really carried on the backs of two different guys. Ezra Gray, uh, one I just mentioned, number 20, and Ja'Cory Merritt has really emerged as a great change of pace guy, both of which can take over a game, both of which I think are going to see a lot of action this weekend. Now, Gray did miss the Auburn game due to injury, but he's already put up 100 yards rushing, a rushing touchdown, averaging about four and a half yards per carry, while Merritt already has three rushing touchdowns this season. The Alabama State has rushed for 230 yards and five touchdowns against nine Power 5 opponents. I'm just going to take out that Auburn game because they held out a lot of players in that game. But it's been the focal point of the offense. The goal of this running game is not only just because that's where your talent is on offense, but it's also, one, take the pressure off of Nettles. He's still pretty inconsistent in terms of turnovers, completion percentages, things like that. So you've got to take the pressure off of him with a solid run game that causes defenses to have to load the box and be, be honest with what they're running. And then, two, with this style of football they play, Alabama State wants to control the time of possession, keep their defense fresh because that's their strength, and that way their defense can be solid in the fourth quarter while their opponents are worn down and they want to test your depth on defense. And it was never more evident than last weekend against Bethune-Cookman. They ran the ball over 35 times against them and won the time of possession battle by over 12 minutes. And you could tell down the stretch, Bethune just did not have enough to compete with the Hornets. Now, I expect Alabama State to do this exact same thing. They are going to try to wear down the FAMU front seven. The lower scoring, the dirtier, the uglier this game can get, the advantage is going to shift to this Hornets team. They If this, if this turns into a slugfest, that's 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 Alabama State's whole. That's their whole mantra. But if this turns into a shootout, that's where I think FAMU can really shine in in terms of what they want to do. But Ryan Nettles has to do one thing this weekend if Alabama State wants to win this game: avoid turnovers. The Hornets absolutely can win this game, but if Nettles throws two, three interceptions, then the Rattlers are too good. They're going to capitalize on that and turn those into points. Now. And Nettles this year, his completion percentage is up to 63%, thrown for almost 600 yards, but he's still two passing touchdowns to three interceptions, and he also has a rushing touchdown. He has to be efficient and effective this weekend, especially early, which is exactly what we saw against Bethune-Cookman, where they took an early 14-0 lead on two big touchdown passes from Nettles. He got them up early. They were able to establish their game plan and wear down with them quickly because they got that early 14-0 lead and built that nice cushion. Now, you know, to the other side of the field, Florida AM. It's clear when you look at how they won their one game against Fort Valley and really what went wrong against Jackson State. You have to, your quarterbacks have to come to play this weekend. If they can't move the ball, this offense cannot be one-dimensional and beat Alabama State. So Rashawn McKay has to be a playmaker. He has to be a distributor on Saturday night. You know, McKay throwing for 465, two passing touchdowns, averaging about 155 per game, completing 58% of his passes. But McKay had a really tough start against Jackson State, only 78 yards passing. But he's rebounded in a big way against USF and Fort Valley. He's thrown for almost 400 in those two games and two touchdowns combined. Now, he's going to have a huge test this weekend. We're going to find out if McKay in this passing offense is legit because this Alabama State secondary is absolutely loaded. He's going to have to continue making plays for his offense. And the number one thing, which he's done thus far, you got to avoid turnovers. That's exactly what impacted Bethune last week. They turned the ball over too much. Take care of the ball and run your offense. Distribute and just be efficient, man, because against Jackson State, it was atrocious. And if they could have just been uh, just a little bit more efficient, they could have beat Jackson State, but they just could not throw the ball. And this Alabama State secondary is going to be no joke. On top of that, they also have to establish some sort of run game on their side as well. That's not only to help McKay out, 
but this defense they're going up against is too good to be one-dimensional. That's exactly what happened to Bethune last weekend. They only had 12 rushing yards against this Hornets defense. Bishop Bonnet, Terrell Jennings are going to have to be huge factors this weekend, and they're going to have to make plays like they did at times against Jackson State and South Florida. Both of them are up over 100 yards rushing. Both got a touchdown, but Jennings averaging nine yards per carry. He is he was so explosive two weeks ago against South Florida. If he can bring that into this weekend, it's really going to help jumpstart this FAMU offense. And it's not just important to McKay. They have to keep the time of possession close. They cannot let their defense be on the field for 35, 40 minutes in a game. That is going to that, that is going to be the worst case scenario for the Rattlers. They have to keep the time of possession close, and they have to have a balanced offense because if you become one dimensional, Alabama State's running away with this game. Now, for my matchup to watch, I always I always try to find strength versus strength, and especially when the strengths of these teams are easily these two positions, it has to be the FAMU wide receivers against the Alabama State defensive backs. This is going to be a huge factor in determining who could come out with a huge SWAC divisional win this weekend. The FAMU wide receivers are vocal. They claim that they are the best wide receiving core in the SWAC, and they're going to have a chance to make their case this weekend. Now, Xavier Smith, of course, is the guy. Like, that is the leader of this offense. And truly, 26 catches, 228, a touchdown. But shockingly, I didn't, I you know, a lot of underneath stuff coming from the slot, only eight yards per catch this season. Jamari uh, Sherrard is also, or, or Sharid is the other guy to look out for, 14 catches for 85 yards. And then uh, David Mandigo, 10 catches, 129, and he's been, you know, the deepest threat for them with like 12 yards per catch. Now, all these guys are going to have to go out and make plays. You've got to get separation, and the FAMU offensive coordinator has to find ways to get them out in space. That's one thing he failed to do against Jackson State, and something that he was he's been getting better at down the down the stretch of the season. But this weekend, they have to get separation. There has to be pre- creative play calling, and you have to trust your playmakers to go make plays in space. Now, Alabama State's defensive backs, for me, I'm just going to give you all my bold hot take. I think they're the most underrated positional unit in the SWAT. I won't be surprised because I believe there's two All-American teams and like an honorable mention. They're going to have four all. They're, they're potentially going to have four All-Americans, and I guarantee three of them will be first or second team, because right now they got that type of talent and potential. Listen, Jacquez Payton. Listen, and I'm, I, Mr. Me and Mr. Moore could talk about it. I think Jacquez Payton's making his case to be the best corner in the SWAC right now, just in terms of production and what he's done this season. Jacquez Payton is making a name for himself. Seven pass breakups already. He ranks second in the FCS in passes defended per game at almost three. He is all over the field. He was the transfer from Jacksonville State, and he's going to be a huge factor, and he's becoming a shutdown corner up there for the Hornets. Now, on top of that, you already have Earshad Davis, who leads the team with 18 tackles, had a huge interception last weekend against Bethune, and then Natron Culpepper made his debut, knocked some rust off last week against Bethune, and I'm expecting him to be a huge factor this weekend for that Hornet, Hornet secondary. Those three guys versus versus Xavier Smith and uh, Sherrard, or Sharid and uh, Mandigo, all those guys, they are going to be that those matchups are potential NFL type matchups, man. I am so excited to see them. That is best on best, and that's really going to determine who can win this game for me. It's going to come down to can they create separation for FAMU's wide receivers, and or can these Alabama State DBs lock them up and create some turnovers like they did last weekend against Bethune Cookman. Now, for my official prediction, I've been going back and forth with this one. Because I think both teams have – this is a very interesting matchup to me because I Rashawn McKay has been playing better and better each and every week. But at the same time, and you look at that defense for Alabama State has been playing absolutely lights out. And 
yes, it was a D2 team in miles, but and they barely won that game. But I don't think people realize they held to like 35 yards passing, which is just a ridiculous stat. And then they held Bethune to 12 yards rushing last week. They showed that they can do either one. For me, I trust Alabama State's defense more than I trust Fams, and I trust Nettles over McKay to make a play to win the game. And so for me, um, I'm going with an Alabama State win this weekend over FAMU, 21-10 to 10 down there in Tallahassee. I got the Hornets pulling out by 11. So I got the Hornets 21, the Rattlers 10 this weekend in Tallahassee. I just think that defense is too good for Alabama State, and I just don't trust the offense of FAMU just yet. So for me, that's that's really was the deciding factor in my prediction. But guys, it's the game of the week, so comment your score predictions, your bowl predictions, comment your winner, all that stuff. And if you hit the score and the winner, if you get the if you get them completely correct, you win our fifty dollar giveaway. And make sure to subscribe and like the video. That way, uh, we can get in touch with you, man. But I appreciate y'all tuning in. It's going to be an outstanding weekend of college football. If you're looking for more week five college football content, check out our playlist. That is That should be popping on the screen up right about now. But, guys, I hope you'll have a great weekend. If you're traveling down to Tallahassee, y'all be safe. Have fun at the game. But for right now, man, the Blue Bloods are out.